gentleman named James Cooper. This will be his second time presenting to the Pecha Kucha crowd. Let it go. Um, this is a project I've been working on for several years, and it's uh, called an ongoing um, <clears throat> survey of bananas in contemporary art. And the images that you're going to see are all uh, pictures I've got, uh, collected online uh, where bananas are either the central subject of the art or uh, integral kind of material used. And hopefully you can see the pictures and maybe read some of the writing because it's kind of an important part of it. But, and a question you might ask is why would somebody do this? You know, it seems a little bit weird, but I'm, uh, <coughs> it started for me because I, um, make a lot, I made some uh, art from bananas. I made a couple of sculptures. And then like in life, a lot of times if you just put your attention on things, you start noticing others' uh, examples of that. And that's really what happened. Like I work a lot, in, um, I look at a lot of images online. It's a really integral part of my practice. And I look at blogs, websites, artist pages. So it's not super surprising that I'd start coming across these types of images. And um, what I do, just very simply, I just started screen grabbing them, command shift four, and then I have a picture and I put in a file, bananas, boom. And at that stage in, in the process, I'm not, um, I'm not really making any kind of a judgment about them. I'm not, I have no agenda with what I'm gonna do with them. I'm simply collecting. So when I'm looking at them, I'm not saying, I like this picture, I don't like this picture. It just has that, the criteria that I'm interested in. And funnily enough, I do like a lot of the pictures. I don't know what it is about bananas, but they tend to lend themselves to things that, are, that interest me, that they're, they're somewhat conceptual, maybe a little bit humorous. And so it's kind of a pleasure to collect them. Um, then as it's going along, I'm <coughs> this banana file is getting quite large. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, I should really do something with this. And I don't know what I want to do, but I say that what the simplest thing I could do is maybe share them with people because I like them, maybe you guys would like them. So very simply, very casually on my Facebook page, I start kind of curating these little shows of bananas. And they get a really big response, like lots of thumbs up and smiley faces and however we communicate nowadays. And so that's a positive thing for me. And at that same time, it was quite fortuitous, I got an invitation from the National Gallery in Jamaica. And they wanted me to be part of a show they were putting on of new media. So at the time, I was like, I'm just kind of started putting two and two together and said, um, what I'd really like to do is take some of these kind of ephemeral web-based images <coughs> and make them tactile and then put them in a concrete space in a gallery. And what I'm interested in that point is I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in this kind of gray area between the online world and the, <coughs> I'll call it the real world, and what happens when you take something that's um, web-based and, and, and really I'm interested in the aesthetic of it this time and this is really a shitty example, but a lot of them, I've, I've left a lot of extraneous information around it. I'm not cropping right on the image. And so what I'm looking at is, there, is there an aesthetic that's different online? So what's acceptable online? What's acceptable in a gallery? And the, at that point, I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, you know, I'm going to propose this to the people in Jamaica, and they're going to think I'm out of my mind. But I, I say to them, look, this is what I want to do. And they're like, no, no, we love it. They're very encouraging. So at this point in the project, I have this commitment to do it, but I'm still not uh, sure what it's going to look like. I have, the, I have the ideas, but not the, the structure of it. So at that point, I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to present this in a way that makes sense to me? So all I did is I um, just printed, I mean, there are hundreds of them, right? So I printed them all out <coughs> on my desktop printer, some British little printer, and laminated them, and then um, just pinned them up in a long snaking line that went around this um, space in Kingston. And what I'm trying to do there is that it's, what I'm really interested in with my art <coughs> is to have a sense of sort of, um, I guess we call it like immediacy and freshness. And I feel like a lot of images we see are so, um, in their, they're so sanitized and, and just constricted that they're kind of dead. And I, I really want this feeling in my art that it's still in the, in the process of happening. It's still kind of evolving. So, and so in that project, I was, um, what was important to me when, when all these things are lined up is that you can actually approach it from different, at any space. You could come in at the middle of it and go right or left. You can come at one end or the other. You can look at parts of it and not others. And for me, what's also, um, what that's doing for me is giving people a zone to like question, um, 
imagery, question image making, question your relationship to, to images, and <coughs> things like that there. <laughs> and I don't have a whole lot more. I didn't really time this very well. But I think one, one of the very important things for me as an artist is I really believe that art can investigate parts of our lives that things like science and economics and other things really can't get to. And it's really important that we look at art and appreciate art because it is, and it's so needed in our lives right now. And just to have the luxury for me to be able to play with these kind of ideas and, and, and show them in, in big um, spaces is really awesome. And we could just look at some, I really don't have anything else to say about this. <laughs> Um, we, I am the last person, so we could go ask questions right away. All right. Um, yeah. So again, like the, the it, what was the the other part that was really important for me with the project, as I said, was was to look at this because you know, the, like most things in our lives now, it's like the majority of art will only ever be seen online. And for me, this is actually this is in Jamaica, and it went all over the place down there. For me, the important part of that is, is really to, to start, start questioning, you know, if, if that is the case, if we're only seeing things online, what does that mean as someone who produces art? What does that mean as someone who looks at art? And I'm, I'm not, with a lot of my work, I'm not giving answers. I'm, I'm really giving you space to ask questions. And that's the last one right there. <laughs> I don't think that was as good as you would have <laughs> I should have probably practiced that, but. I'd be very happy to answer some questions. Cause Thank you for the presentation. Just wanted to know where I'm over here. Right here. Oh, the light is in his eyes. Uh, <laughs> um, just, just wondering, curious, where the connection or the, um, the connection to bananas or, or the significance came from with your art in ban on bananas? Um, I don't know how significant it is for me, really. I, I, other than, I, in a lot of my work, I do use very um, common materials that are around me all the time, and I, I make what I would call, this is a, I'm actually a bit of a hard artist to pin down, because I do make a lot of different types of things, like this, I don't only do work like this, so, um, yeah, I, I, do, I make sculptures that don't last very long, and then take pictures of them, and so bananas are just, they are something that are part of our lives, and I, I like to use things that are familiar, and I, and I think, one thing with a project like this is, I, I think we it, it lets people in, in in a very interesting way because we it, it's not a threatening material and it's it I think there is and there is in the world today it's just kind of a uh, this need for more people to look at art than actually go into galleries and I think in some way I'm looking for materials that are somehow not intimidating in some way. Thank you for the interesting um, presentation. And I'm wondering, um, speaking of viewing images online, is there, do you have a website where we can go and see photos of your uh, exhibit in Jamaica? Uh, yes, I do. Awesome. What would that be? Uh, it's jamesjamescooper.com. All right, I can remember that. Um, and one other question. What's in your next uh, folder that you're saving images of? I'm really curious. Uh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a lot of different um, things, yes. And like I said, I, don't, I, I I'm really, um, I don't know how to say it, I'm really leery as an artist. I think there's so much pressure for artists to just do one thing. And guys, like, I don't want to be known as the guy who laminates stuff on the wall of bananas or the guy who only does underwater pictures. And, and there is such, a, it's a real pressure for artists to do that. And it's a, it's a marketing thing, and I understand it, but my mind doesn't really work like that, so. Um, I have a question. Um, do you have any theories on why bananas are such a popular subject for so many different artists? I really don't know. Um, the, the only thing I would say, I, I, I feel like you could take a lot of different things, and if you, if you chose one thing, you could, you could probably find, uh, you know, if I did shoes or I did whatever it is. I, I, I think bananas might not be peculiar to, to being popular, I think. Okay, I have a, a secondary question, kind of building on that. Um, have you spoken to any of the other bananas in your collection? 
Um, have you reached out? I had no idea there was so much art on bananas. I know, it's um, crazy. But yeah. there were some really interesting, inspiring some sort of pieces. <laughs> so did you ask any of them or talk to any of them about... No, and that's actually... Because I know it kind of relates to a little bit to, to showing work like that. And there's another thing that agitates people a little bit is that I'm doing two things in Jamaica that is kind of frowned upon. It's like... I'm not showing my own work, and I'm showing it in really a not very high quality of reproduction. And when you get into uh, uh, formal institutions like that, it, it, people get a little nervous. So, but I think when people get nervous, you maybe you're hitting a little bit of a nerve like that. I, in I do know some of the people. The 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 I don't know if the second to last one. I know that guy, but I didn't ask him if I could do. It. But see, and that's another thing because uh, online and like blogs are interesting because you really don't need to ask permission of people. Whereas, and, and this one's kind of a gray area because I'm not making money off it. But if I was maybe trying to sell that and I didn't ask the guy, we'd be you're in another another kind of area there. But but you like bananas, right? It's cool. They're interesting. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was a great presentation. Also, I I'm a like really it was big. That great, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was it was wicked. Good ending. Um, I'm a really big fan of yours. Um, but you touched upon something that kind of is a big subject in Bermuda, especially to the arts community. You were saying that because people are sharing images so much, you know, obviously a lot of people aren't going out there to see images. Do you think that this means there's the death of a gallery? Are there deaths of galleries? because of the online community sharing images? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I, mean, um, I, I don't know what the figures are, but it's, like it, it's kind of the thing that you do hear about like a lot of things related to the internet is that, you know, just the sheer numbers of people. And, but I think it maybe it's just highlighting something that was already happening. Like, if I think about it, like I've, I know I'm very aware of a lot of paintings I've never stood in front of, and I saw them in books, I guess, or... You know, when I, so, like, I may not have seen a Picasso's Guernica, but I, I know of its existence, and that's not, doesn't stop galleries. I, 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 I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just... Cool. Thank you so much, James. Can I get another round of applause for all of the presenters tonight? <laughs>